Hello, and welcome to Writer's Notebook Lesson 12. Today we're offering the final lesson on editing and rewriting our short story. On Tuesday, Mr. Fries will go over some final thoughts on editing uh, any major or minor changes that you may want to make to your story. And then a week from today, on Thursday, November 12th, we're going to ask that you submit your final draft for our short story. So we have about a week to go. Today's lesson is very simple. It's about how to use punctuation of commas and semicolons to develop compound sentences. A lot of times in our writing in the beginning stages, we tend to see, have, have a tendency to use a lot of simple short sentences. And if we can start combining those and make them compound sentences, it provides for greater, greater detail and clarity and variety to our writing. It makes it a little more interesting and it kind of connects some thoughts for the reader. Okay, on this slide here is where the video is that you're watching. Okay, all right, kind of just an overview of punctuation. As we go through the year, we'll be covering lots of different types of punctuations. Here are some of them that we will cover and some of them we've already have. This morning's lesson is going to focus on two, commas and semicolons, and specifically how they can be used to write compound sentences. Okay, all right, so why would we want to write compound sentences? Well, we said in, by writing compound sentences, a writer can build more detail into their writing. So let's kind of explore a compound sentence and how it's built. All right, on this slide coming up here on the bottom, it states that a compound sentence has at least two independent clauses. Now let's look at a compound sentence. In the middle here, it says, I drink green tea, but they drink coffee. Okay, I drink green tea is going to be considered an independent clause. They drink coffee is going to be considered an independent clause. And then in the middle, the word but is considered a joining word, the joining method. So what we're going to focus on is having two independent clauses, okay, connected by a joining method or coordinating conjunctions, as they're called in English. Okay? All right. So let's kind of, let's kind of keep working backwards. If it needs a compound sentence needs two independent clauses, what specifically is an independent clause? A, an independent clause is a group of words that contains a subject and a verb, okay, usually a noun and a verb. It expresses a complete thought, and it is a complete sentence. On the sentence on the bottom, it reads, the mailman left an envelope in the mailbox, okay? The mailman, mailman would be your subject. Subjects are usually nouns, okay? You have common nouns, proper nouns, pronouns, okay? It's a main noun of a sentence, okay? The verb. Here, left is an action verb. We have linking verbs, action verbs, helping verbs, main verbs. Okay, so here, kind of in the simplest form, we have an action verb. So we have our subject and verb. Does it express a complete thought? Mailman left an envelope in the mailbox? Yes. Is it a complete sentence? Yes. So this sentence here would qualify as an independent clause. Okay, all right. The second part we said of this is what are the joining words? And in English, we call these coordinating conjunctions. These are seven words that join independent clauses. You've heard of these words. They are and, but, or, nor, for, so, and yet. Okay. And, but, nor, probably the most common three. All right. So let's have a couple of examples here quickly. All right. We have a couple of independent clauses here. We have Carol spotted her favorite butterfly. Okay. Subject, verb. Second simple sentence. She had forgotten to bring her camera. All right, so two sentences, nothing wrong with this. But if we want to develop a little more deeper writing, okay, kind of connect these two thoughts together. All right, so we take Carol spotted her favorite butterfly, but she had forgotten to bring her camera. Okay, and you have the two uh, independent clauses. You have the coordinated conjunction. So you use a comma to separate this. Now, if you look at the two, two groups of sentences here, the top two sentences are just fine. But on the bottom, it, it, again, it provides a little more detail and understanding to the reader. Where if you say, Carol spotted her favorite butterfly, but she had forgotten to bring her camera. Okay, sense, oh no, okay. So it adds a little more detail. Here's a quick second example. Gloria took a trip to Oroville. There's your subject and verb, second sentence. Her friend Pat joined her there. Okay, nothing wrong with that, but just improving it a little bit. Gloria took a trip to Oroville, and her friend Pat joined her there. And you can add then with your coordinated conjunction, you add a comma. Now, you, to have that comma, you need a subject and a verb on each side of that coordinated conjunction. If you only have one 
of those on each side or one on one side and two on the other, they, you, you don't uh, use the comma. Okay, you need both on each side. There's your compound sentence. Okay, the second type of uh, punctuation that we're briefly going to study is using a semicolon to write a compound sentence. Basically, what is a semicolon? It's a punctuation that joins two independent clauses, but you're using no conjunction. It's considered to be stronger than a comma, but not quite as strong as a period. Okay, and the rules for a semicolon use in compound sentences are very similar to the rules for using a comma and the coordinating conjunctions. All right, so, but you, what we're doing here is we're gonna take these two simple sentences, combine them with a semicolon. Let's take a look and see how this works. My grandmother, Kristen, will stay with me. There's subjects, two verbs, will stay. I would not have it otherwise, okay? Again, two simple sentences, they're both good, but if we kind of combine them together and complete that thought, okay? My grandmother, Kristen, will stay with me, semicolon, I would not have it otherwise, okay? I said it any other way. I would not have it otherwise. Again, we're just kind of joining them together. Now, if you look at the difference, could you put a comma there with a coordinating conjunction? Yes. This is just another way of expressing a thought and providing some detail, okay? And it's kind of maybe explaining a little bit of what the first part of the sentence says. All right. Uh, very quickly, here's a second one. You should drive carefully to the store. Uh, Mom will be glad you did. Okay. Again, connecting those together. You should drive to the store. Mom will be glad you did. I'm just connecting it with a semicolon. Again, you have subjects and verbs on each side. Okay. To make this a, a two independent clauses. All right. Uh, looking at our story that we were writing. Okay. Uh, again, just trying to create some compound sentences and make things a little more detailed, more interesting. All right, in this sentence here, it says, the ladies are fiercely protective of their friends, these ladies. So we would have ladies are protective. Ladies is probably your subject. Are protective is your verb. All right, and we have a corday conjunction and. It took a minute for them to trust that I was a good person and would not be hurting their friend or them. Uh, looking back at this phrase, I would say it took is your, it is your subject took as your verb. So you have a subject and verb on each side. You put that coordinating conjunction there. And in front of the coordinating conjunction, you have a comma. Again, if you look at the sentence now, these ladies are fiercely protected of their friends. And it took a minute for them to trust that I was a good person. It would not be hurting them or their friend. So here they're hurting their friend or them. So you're connecting two thoughts together. It's just providing for more uh, detailed writing and makes it a little more enjoyable for the reader to read. Okay, the last example we have for you on our writing is the very last paragraph. After one more hug, we settle down for supper. Sammy starts to tell us uh, all about what happened in third grade. Sammy starts would be your subject and verb. We have and as your coordinating conjunction. Slowly but surely, things start to seem a little bit normal. All right? it, I think your subject and verb here would be things start. So we have subject and verb on each side. We have a coordinated conjunction with a comma in front. Okay? So what we want to do then for today, two very simple tasks. As you go through and continue to rewrite and edit your story, look at your sentences. See if some can be written. Can some sentences be written as compound sentences using commas? Or can some be written using semicolons? Okay? Very simple. And when you're finished with that, just want to kind of tidy up some of the things that we've talked about here in the last two weeks. Are your scenes in order? Is there continuity throughout your story? Are you using quotations? We saw a lot of good use with students yesterday in the last couple of days working to add conversations with the show, not tell. It really, really enhances your writing. Uh, lots of short paragraphs. Mr. Freeze went over yesterday or uh, uh, in a previous lesson how to write short paragraphs and and reasons that you would trans transition to a new paragraph uh, there were five total one of them was a new speaker but she added several other ones and then today with the comments and the semicolons okay so uh continue to work if you have questions please let mr freeze or myself know uh, again uh the story your final draft will be due next thursday november 12th okay good luck writing and as always if you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact us have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.